Okay, here's warm up number 7.3. All right, I'm going to sketch uh, this uh, equation. So, this is one of the problems that I like to call crosshair problems um, because I've just got a uh, just got a number as my numerator, um, a, a constant, and on the bottom I have x plus or minus something, or it could be 2x plus or minus something or something like that. But um, So uh, what I'm going to do first is find the uh, center of the, what I call the crosshairs. So um, I'll take that denominator and set it equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, so um, x actually can't equal negative 1 here if you think about it because the denominator can't equal 0. So that quantity can't, if you plugged in a negative 1, that would give you a 0 denominator. So this is going to give me a vertical asymptote at negative 1. Um, um, so here, I'll, I'll, might as well just put it in now. There's the line x equals negative 1. Okay, and then um, I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote as well from this part. So y is just going to equal um, this for my horizontal asymptote. And actually, uh, y can't equal that. So I've got my crosshairs are going to cross at the point negative 1, negative 2. It's uh, you know, solving for x in the denominator and then just taking that number as it is. Okay, And I'm going to get curves that are going in two of the corners of this, uh, of this graph. So they'll either be in these two corners or in these two corners. And the way you can tell is if the fraction is positive, then it should end up in these two corners. If the fraction is negative, it should end up in these two corners. So I should have, since my fraction here is positive, I should have a, a curve somewhere up here and then a mirror image of that down in this corner. Okay? Um, but you can always verify it by finding your intercept. So I'm going to find the x-intercept by plugging in 0 for y. And then I'll solve. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Okay. Now to, to solve for x, you could multiply both sides for, by x plus 1 to get rid of the fraction. And then you divide both sides by, by 2 to get rid of the 2. Um, but what I like to do is something I call the incredible switch. When you have a number that's equal to a fraction, you can just switch the positions of those two things. That's how it's going to shake out algebraically. Okay, and then I just subtract 1 from both sides, so I've got 1 and a half. Um, 1 and a half minus 1 would be 1 half. Okay, so I've got an x-intercept at 1 half. Let's put that into the picture there. Okay, and I was guessing there was going to be a, a curve up here, so I'm feeling good about that because, yeah, I can see now my equation should be up there. Let's find the y-intercept as well. Okay, y-intercept, I'm going to plug in 0 for x. So that's going to be 3 over 1, which is just 3. And so my y-intercept is 1. Oh, and I had 1 half here, and I put it at negative 1 half. Oops. So yeah, this was a mistake. I was thinking that this should have been right there. OK, and then my y-intercept is at 1 right here. I was thinking that was going to curve the wrong way. But now I'm feeling better about this. I just plotted that in the wrong place. I went one half to the right of the green line rather than the, the y-axis. OK, so I should get now a curve in this corner. And I'm going to use the asymptotes as a guide because my curve is going to approach those asymptotes but never cross it. So I should get, should get something along those lines. And you could plug in more x values to, to get a better idea what the curve looks like. And then I'm just going to. Um, make a mirror image of that down here. And again, you could plug in more x values. Like I could put in you know, negative 2 or negative 3 for x and see what I get out. But it's going to look just like that one. So I'm just making a, a mirror image down there. And there is my graph. OK, next up, we're going to go um, back in time a little bit and do some synthetic division. So I'm looking for um, any. Um, any missing terms here. I don't have any because I've got an x squared term, an x term, and a constant. Um, but when I'm doing s synthetic division, I take this and think, well, if I set that equal to 0, x would equal negative 1. So negative 1 is what I'm putting in this little box. And then I'm pulling out my coefficients here. Okay, And I leave a little space. I'm going to pull down the 1. Okay, And then every time I get something down here, I'm going to multiply by negative 1. So negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And then I add these together. 5 plus negative 1 is 4. 
Let's multiply these, that's negative four. And then I add those and I get a remainder of two. This is gonna be the remainder box. Um, okay, so um, now we have to build this back into a polynomial. So my remainder box, that's gonna be the, the numerator of the remainder. The, the, uh, the denominator is just whatever you're dividing by, in this case, x plus one, okay? This is gonna be just a four, this is gonna be a one x. So as I go to the left, the, I add one, uh, one, uh, one power of x as I go to the left. So this is one x, or just x, and I separate that with a plus sign, and then here we go, okay? All right, so next problem. Um, looking at this, and first thing I'm thinking is, well, let's try to factor because I might be able to just reduce this after it's factored. So on top, I'm, let's see, I'm looking for two numbers that add to five, same two numbers multiply to six. Well, two and three would work, right? Two times three is six, two plus three is five. So the top of this is gonna factor to x plus two times x plus three. And this is all over x plus one. In the past, we had some problems where uh, we could reduce at this point, but I don't have—I can't do any reducing here. If if I could, it would just be a line with a hole in it. But it's not going to be that simple here. But it's still worth uh, factoring just to make sure that it's not just a line with a hole in it. Okay. So let's start looking for the intercepts and the asymptotes then. Okay. So. Um, the vertical asymptote is going to come from setting the denominator equal to zero. I'm just going to put VA for vertical asymptote. Okay. Um, so I'll take this, set it equal to zero. Um, you could even put, this is really what X can't equal when I solve this for X. X can't equal negative one. Okay, so I've got a vertical asymptote and negative one. Let's put that in the graph. Okay, and this one, um, with, this, with this type, when I've got a, a larger degree um, polynomial in the numerator than I do in the denominator, and I can't reduce it, which I can't here, then I'm actually not gonna have a horizontal asymptote. I'm gonna have a slant asymptote. Okay, so um, the way I'm gonna find the slant asymptote is by doing the division suggested in the fraction. So um, I'm going to think of this, rather than writing this as a fraction, I'm thinking, okay, the numerator is this trinomial. I'm going to divide by the quantity x plus 1. And the way I'm going to do that division is with synthetic division. You could do long division if you wanted. But let's see. Um, I'd put a negative 1 in this little box, and then I'd have 1, 5, 6. Okay, I'll pull down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add that. 5 plus negative 1 is 4. Multiply. And then add once more. Okay. And <clears throat> so if I build this ba back <clears throat> into a polynomial, I still had the y equals out there. Okay. This would be 1x plus 4 plus 2 over x plus 1. But here's the thing with this, um, with this slant asymptote. If I plugged in a really large number for x, like a million, then I'd be taking two and, and dividing it by a million and one into really small little bits, right? Or if I put in a really large negative number, the same kind of thing would happen and be a um, really small negative number. So um, the, the uh, remainder is gonna become insignificant when you put large numbers in as we go to the right and left on the x-axis. So our slant asymptote, the line that our curve is gonna be approaching is actually going to be this line. So I'm just going to kind of ignore the, uh, throw away the uh, remainder. So I'm going to graph the line y equals x plus 4. Well, that has a, uh, has a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of 1, right? So I'll go up one to the right one, up one to the right one, or I could go down one to the left one. And what I'm graphing right now is the asymptote, right? So now I've got these two asymptotes, and I'm going to get curves in two of the corners just like I did on this problem. I'm not sure yet which corners they'll be in, but I can use the um, x and y intercepts to help inform me. It should be either in these two or in those two. So let's see what happens when I find the x-intercept first, and then I'll go for the y-intercept. So the x-intercept is gonna, I'm gonna get that by plugging in zero for y.
Okay, now if I multiply both sides by x plus 1, then on the left side I'll have 0 times x plus 1, while 0 times x plus 1 is just 0. So what I'm going to end up with is 0 equals x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay, so a shortcut here, you can just set the numerator equal to 0 when you're looking for the x-intercept. Now um, I would factor this, which I already did up here, so I'll just reuse that. It's going to be x plus 2 times x plus 3, and then use the zero product property, and x would equal negative 2 or negative 3. So I have two different x-intercepts, okay? So one right here and one right here, and now I'm getting the idea that, hey, I'm going to have a curve in this corner, all right? Let's see if we can find a y-intercept. I'm just going to plug 0 in for x, and you could plug it into the factored version or the original. It doesn't really matter. I think I'll plug it into the original. Okay, and all the terms of 0 are just going to be 0, so I'm just going to be left with 6 over 1. So my y-intercept um, is going to be 6, okay? And just from this information, I can make a pretty decent graph. So I'm going to have a curve. It's going to just pop over the x-axis there a little bit, something like that, okay? And then I'll, I should have the mirror image, and I'll also use this... Um, intercept and those asymptotes to help inform how I draw the curve. And there we go. Okay, and that's the end of the warm-up, and I'll see you next time.